Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nick from the Designs Academy, and today I am bringing you guys a tutorial on recreating layer styles. Um, this is something that I help a lot of people with all the time. Uh, they see a cool banner or something that they want to try and recreate in some sort of a similarity, and uh, a lot of people uh, can't do that or have trouble doing that and need some help. So I help a lot of people with that, so I'm going to show you guys kind of my process of recreating some layer styles. This is one that somebody sent me last night. I'll zoom in a little bit, it's going to get a little blurry, but you'll get the point. Uh, he wanted to try and recreate this text, so I uh, went through and tried to help him as much as I could get something vaguely similar to this. Um, now obviously there's some things that you know, you're not going to be able to redo, or that are going to be very difficult for you to redo. Uh, so it depends on how similar you really need to get it. A lot of times you can get it pretty close and it'll look pretty good. This is a pretty cool layer style. I actually really like this a lot. Um, but the first thing is when you find an image like this, uh, you're going to want to find the font or a very similar font. Now I didn't have to go hunting for this font. Uh, the guy that messaged me about this already had it. And it's called Gang of Three Regular. Um, it's a pretty cool font actually. It's kind of like Chinese writing but in English. Um, so basically go into Photoshop and I'll open up a new document if it'll work. Um, 25 by 3, 2500 by 3000 should be okay. It doesn't need to be huge but that's pretty good for a nice um, nicely sized image so it's nice and crisp. Um, just unlock the background layer. Um, and I'm going to make a new fill layer just so we can get rid of this white background. Um, fill layers are great because it's really easy to change the entire layer of the, the background color really quickly. So you just make one of these and it'll give you and I can just double click on it and change the color at any time. So now my next step is I'm going to drag in this image into my Photoshop just so it's there for reference for me while I'm doing this uh, so I don't have to keep changing back and forth in between uh, this image and my Photoshop. Uh, I'm going to create some center lines real quick just to keep everything nice and in the center. Uh, we'll rename this original. And I'm going to rasterize this so I can do my next step, which is going to be picking out these colors. Um, if you just use the brush tool and I uh, hold Alt, the key I'm holding right now, you'll see it picks up the eyedropper tool, so instead of, you know, actually, uh, let's see, you can press I to change to the eyedropper tool, or while you're using the brush, you can just hold Alt and click to get whatever color you want. So I'm going to get this kind of range of colors, and I'm just going to throw it up here really quick. Um, we're going to need a gradient mask for this, so that's why I'm going through and kind of grabbing all the different colors so that when we do that, it's uh, a nice blended uh, gradient mask over the text. So we'll go down here and we'll grab one more. No, it's not. Okay, let's grab. I did this yesterday, so I'm going to grab one lighter one because that definitely worked a lot better. And something like that should work. Uh, you'll just kind of see I've got the gradient really roughly blocked out. Um, you can see here it goes from light to the darker green to a little bit of a lighter green. Not quite this light, so I might go ahead and change this to something a little bit darker. Like that. That should be good. So now that we've got that already, we can actually go into our font. Now, the easiest thing when you're uh, trying to recreate some font, usually before you change it to whatever you want it to say, is to have it say what it does in the original picture. So we'll have this say resurge um, as you can see down there this is a if this actually might be the exact same font because this is a yeah I think it is um, so yeah we've got the exact same font in this situation which is really nice I'm just gonna hide my rulers real quick um, so this is nice to try and recreate this because we don't have to do any guesswork or work with some sort of a different uh, font which is gonna look obviously a little different so I'm going to start out with our sort of base layer here. So we're going to go to FX under the uh, research text. Go to gradient overlay because we want to get this nice uh, green sort of fade. So we're going to go over gradient overlay and click on this gradient bar and it's going to pull up our gradient window. So 
this is where uh, this kind of color map that I've laid out is going to come in handy. So we're going to go from the left being the top to the right being the bottom. So we're going to click on this, double click, and we'll just it'll op automatically open up your eyedropper tool for the rest of your Photoshop window. And we're just going to pick this top color, and you double click to add another point. I'm just going to go through and kind of add all these different colors. And uh, the reason I've laid out so many colors is that this gradient map will fade through all these colors and add a nice buffer zone, a nice fade kind of in between them. So let's see if we pick that font or that color. And we'll pick this last color right here. So here, now it's just kind of a matter of rearranging uh, these things to get our gradient more like that one in the picture. Um, so you'll see here we're going to move this in a little bit because that we want that dark green strip to be a little bit smaller. So we'll just move this in the middle and we might want to add another point in here. Something like that. Well, let's do, do that. Uh, this is just kind of messing around with it to get it uh, to a as similar as the other one as you want or if you find something that you know you end up liking better than the original you can always use that um let's see here let's delete this point uh yeah just just a little bit of like toying around just trying to get it to uh to look right uh until we like it this point will not delete why this gradient map thing gets a little funky sometimes kind of hard to use um, so we'll just do that, I guess. Now we've got this, and I'm gonna go ahead and say that's for tutorial's sake. That's probably close enough. Uh, obviously, it's not perfect or anywhere near perfect, but for right now, it's good enough. Uh, I did one yesterday, which I will show you guys right now. Uh, let's see here, research, and you can see that once I've finished all of my layers it looks pretty close with the uh, exception of whatever he's laid over the final image but the text in its likeness is pretty dang close to the original so uh, let me just I'm gonna copy this um, this uh, gradient overlay really quick just because this one turned out really good that on our tutorial one because that one definitely looked really nice gradient load desktop research gradient it's a great thing about Photoshop is you can reuse things over and over again and it's really nice all right so we have the uh, layer style which I think looks pretty good right now the gradient overlay now my next step is uh, let's see we'll add the stroke so the stroke is just gonna be a an outline around it um, it's I'd say a thinner stroke on this um, and rather than having it pure black we're gonna pick this green and I'm gonna turn it really dark just so that it's still a nice outline but it's not quite as thick well let's go up to a six thickness and it's that dark green so it'll blend really nicely with the rest of our text next up uh, you're gonna see let me oh crap uh, don't need to do that okay zoom in on this and you guys can see it's a pretty fuzzy because this isn't exactly huge and it's a Geyser screenshot but you'll see that this has kind of a lime green inner glow so we're gonna go into our effects and tick on inner glow and click on this color and it's kind of like a lime green the eyedropper tool is really useful when you're trying to recreate things um, and we'll just increase the size a bit a lot of this is just a lot of like messing around just trying to get it right um, because it is kind of difficult and it really just depends on what you're trying to do no, don't want that there's a lot of different things that you can do in this uh, in the FX editor
that's pretty good right there it's got a nice uh, lime green outline even on the darker sections you can see that there a little higher res with this text right here that I've recreated um, and our next step after creating our inner glow let's see we will do we'll do the outer glow so the outer glow is going to be this kind of thin whitish green outline uh, and this actually took me a little bit to figure out because I was not doing it right but now that I figured out um, I'll show you guys uh, grab the eyedropper tool now keep in mind that the eyedropper tool does grab the exact pixel that you're hovering over so if you're looking at a color and it's picking up a totally different shade of that color or even a different color um, that could be why uh, because it just it grabs that whatever exact pixel that you're uh, that your cursor is over so if you wanted to to get the outer glow exactly like this picture you would have to probably pen to around it to get it to float like that because uh, so far I haven't found a way that you can do that I'm sure there is some sort of a way but I don't know yet so um, this is pretty close it's similar um, to this text um, you can see it's got the outline but this one is floating so if you wanted to do that I would pen tool around it I'm sure there's an easier way to do it but if you really wanted it to get exactly like this text then that would be the way to do it uh, next up we're gonna add this kind of silver backing um, with a drop shadow so we're just gonna go in here uh, make this silver go whitish silver maybe a little darker and we are going to add the size up because we want it away from it but also to make it darker this actually is way too similar to our background so we are going to change this to something a little bit lighter or maybe a different color completely mm, no, we'll just change it to more of a white um go back here to a drop shadow uh, let's make it I like to make it black when I'm working on it so it's a little bit easier and to make it so that it's like the text dropping back you just want to turn your spread all the way up and it will uh, it'll fix that and we'll do this and uh, you can see we've got the angle set to 90 that's just the default and that kind of makes it drop down like this um, yeah, so that's, uh, let's see here, bring the distance in a little bit, that's pretty close, uh, we'll leave that at 90, this is showing it a little bit more than it is on this example, but I think it looks pretty good, so we're going to leave it like that, and, uh, let's turn down the opacity just a touch, okay, so we've got our drop shadow now, which if we turn this black, we probably will oh, no. Turn this, uh, you can see it there as I just kind of cycle through these colors. We'll leave it on that, you can see it. Uh, it just kind of drops back, very subtle. It is a little crisper in this, but I think that they actually pen tooled it back because this is actually a really nice uh, font, so they probably spent some time on this. Okay guys, I have actually uh, figured out a better way to do that drop shadow uh, to make it kind of the more crisp silver way that it is in the example. Um, so we're just going to disable that drop shadow that I just added. We're going to duplicate the research text and put it behind it, behind the original. And um, we're going to hide all the effects except for the stroke because that's the only one that we actually want. Uh, we'll hide the other text for a second too. So you can see we've got the stroke now. Um, I'm going to change the color of the text to this kind of gray-white and if we put it behind this one you can see if we just resize it while keeping it centered that's important because you don't want the U to show as much you just want the uh, sides to show um, and if we resize it you can kind of see that it gives it a similar effect but it's actually smaller than that. Okay, so you're going to want to make it smaller because it's uh, kind of reflecting as if the text is getting wrapped around something, sort of, is the best way to explain it. 
um, and let's see we'll make it a little bit bigger than that and center it back up and there we go that's pretty close to that text right there uh, so that's how you would do that sort of a gray drop shadow um, now we're pretty much almost done here uh, it's getting pretty close uh, the last thing that I noticed when I was looking at this yesterday is it's got a kind of a, a dotted pattern to it. So what I've done is downloaded a where is it here? This picture right here, a bunch of dots, and I'm gonna go ahead and drag that into Photoshop. Um, I just googled dot pattern, and I came up with this. So what I'm gonna do with this is get rid of this white part first of all. Uh, we'll just use. So we can use the magic eraser tool. It's a good tool when you're just erasing black from white or white from black, either way. Um, yeah, so we'll just go through really quick and just gotta click on each white section and it will delete it. Uh, it makes a selection of whatever color you click on. So since this is just white, it actually does a, a good job of erasing it uh, rather than if you use it on a gradient, it's not really gonna work because if you pick one color out of a gradient, it's just gonna erase like a line. Um, I'm gonna turn this like here and I'm gonna erase this side part because that dot is not gonna work. Uh, just kinda clean this up really quick. That's close enough. This is gonna be hardly visible so don't worry too much if you can't get the best uh, sort of sample image. I'm gonna flip this really quick like this. Get as close as I can. There's no gap. There we go. And merge these two down. And all I'm going to do is sort of lay these across my image really quick. Let me re select the research text. If it will unfreeze because Photoshop is lagging right now. Oh, okay. It's not lagging, it's just because I have that selected. Wow. Alright. Here we go. So now I'm just going to kind of resize this down. I've noticed it's kind of from the darker part up, so I'm going to kind of arrange it somewhere like that. And all I'm going to do is uh, multiply it or duplicate it until it's all the way across. And I will just end up merging these all together. So we'll get one more in there. Now if we merge these, we've got kind of a uh, dotted fade pattern going up. Now I'm going to create this as a clipping mask so I don't have to worry about erasing it around the text. And um, basically you won't be able to see it at first. You notice uh, right now it's at a clipping mask but I can't see it. So what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm gonna go onto the research layer, I'm gonna get this selection tool right here, the quick selection tool, and I'm just gonna select the text. If you just drag it across the screen, the screen it'll only select the pixels on that layer, which in this case is the research text. I'm gonna go back over to this dotted layer and I'm gonna hit copy and then paste and it will basically paste out the layer of the selected R which is only things that are on the R and then we don't have to have it as a clipping mask so it'll actually show up. I'm going to turn the opacity way down on this because we don't want it to be that noticeable just kind of a little bit uh, and it looks like it shifted a little bit so let's, let's turn the opacity back up and see if we can fix this. There we go. Zoom in a little bit. Photoshop if you can't move something into the place that you want it's just good to to zoom in and you can move it like this pixel by pixel. That should be close enough. It's overlaying on the text. I'm going to turn the opacity down quite a bit. Well, to the point where it's still noticeable. And you'll notice we had kind of a strong dark line on the bottom here. So I've got a uh, brush, uh, lower the opacity to around 30 and I'm just going to go and kind of make that a clean fade into that green. go through and fix all these and we've got the dots fading in so that's basically our uh, 
text match right here it's pretty close um, with the exception of the outline and kind of the overlay of all the banner with the glow um, but there is one last thing the font in the picture is curved and the way that I've decided to do that for this image is uh, just gonna take all these and I'm gonna uh, let's see here let's deselect all these I'm gonna combine all these layers because I want to uh, get them as one object. Let me just rasterize these real quick so we can merge them together. Rasterize, and we'll reselect these. And here we go, merge layers. Now, if you were gonna save this for a normal banner, you might want to. Uh, might want to uh, not merge these together or at least keep a backup just in case you ever want to edit them. Uh, I just need to unclick these. Okay, yeah. So we're going to merge these layers. Uh, it did mess up the stroke, so I don't know why it's doing that. Alright, anyway. Um, basically, you're going to want to merge these together. Uh, hang on a second, I'm gonna figure out how to merge these. Okay, yeah, so I just had to rasterize the layer style real quick. But now I will merge these together. If we rasterize this layer style as well. Oh, cancel. Photoshop can be a little bit confusing at times. Uh, okay, it's still turning the outline green. Whatever. We're gonna leave it for now. Don't remember how I did it last night. But I will merge these layers so I can show you guys how I created the spherical uh, kind of thing. So we're gonna go to filter, uh, let's see here, distort, and spherize, which if you know what a sphere is, it's a circle. So we can see here in our preview window that the more that we turn this up, it's at 100 right now, uh, we can actually turn it into more of a sphere. So you can see here, it's a circle and it's curved now. Uh, now it's not the exact same curve, this is the curve in the picture is a little bit down, but this basically gives you the idea. Uh, we've pretty much recreated this text fairly well. Uh, there obviously are things you could do better. I'm just doing this really quickly to show you guys for a tutorial. Um, this looks a lot better than the one that I did yesterday. Um, but yeah guys, that is how to, I basically go about uh, remaking layer styles that people send me because it does happen a lot people will find cool banners and they want to know how to recreate them so these are kind of my steps to do it hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial leave comments down below for any other tutorials you'd like me to do i do i have a better computer now so i can do tutorials in photoshop of more stuff like this uh we just recorded our 7k q a and it's about 40 minutes long so look out for that it will be going up on friday so hopefully you guys will enjoy that it's been Nick from Designs Academy. Peace.